hurt because they talk a good game and they present a lot of actual and factual information. But a con man in reality is manipulating you. Okay, let me repeat that. On the surface, a con man, what they're telling you looks to be sound and reasonable. And it appears that they have your best interest at heart because they talk a good game. But in reality, the con artist is manipulating you. Okay? A con man can speak much truth, guys. 80% truth, 90% truth, 95% truth. They can speak much truth. It looks good, especially at first, right? But over a period of time, they start massaging the facts. They start, uh, they start massaging the truth. You know, speaking half-truths to promote an agenda, especially in the case of what's commonly termed a long con that takes place over months and even many years, okay? And they do this after they have gained your trust and you stop checking up on them. You hear me, friends and saints? You have what's called a long con and a short con. Long cons take place over a lengthy period of time and it's and in such schemes, okay, the offending party gains your trust initially at the beginning, especially when they are charismatic and speak with authority. And once that trust is secured, he or she begins to take advantage of you because you stop checking up on them. And what starts out as mostly actual and factual becomes twisted, perverted, and even bogus propaganda to dupe you and deceive you. Okay? And, and guys, friends and saints, this happens in the world of religion, brothers and sisters, and friends of the Most High God, Yahweh. Okay? I hear all the time about people getting conned out of their life savings by con men wearing suits, sitting behind a computer perhaps, and posing as an authority figure on something when they really are not. And guys, we live in a world, Satan's world, where people get conned all the time out of many things. But many of you I don't think, are aware of the con game played in the world of religion. Oh yes. These, my friends, are the most dangerous con games. Religious con games. Because it is not just your wallet or your purse or your bank account that is at stake. In a religious con, your salvation is at stake. So I want all of you guys to listen to me very closely, especially those of you who are coming to an understanding of the Hebrew roots of Christianity, and those of you that are starting to see that most of Christianity today is a counterfeit religion of Satan the devil. Okay? I especially want those of you that are listening who are considering joining the Straightway Truth Ministry pastored by Charles Dow, Dowell to listen to me very closely. I want to speak mainly to those of you who are in the midst of a spiritual awakening or are brand new to the Hebrew roots of Christianity. Welcome to HardcoreChristianity.com. Jezebel, the church monster. Jezebel spirit. I'm going to explain it today from a biblical perspective and from a psychological perspective. If you've got a Jezebel in your church or in your living, you're living with one in your family, well, are you in some deep trouble? This powerful demon is a monster. Have you ever known anybody that had a Jezebel spirit? This powerful spirit is extremely dangerous. If this evil spirit enters your church, 
you're going to be in extremely dire straits shortly. The spirit is a male and it looks for most of the time female humans. And this spirit, this Jezebel spirit usually always looks for an intelligent woman. And they look for women who had poor father figures and women who have been traumatized in childhood. The reason they're looking for women who've been traumatized in childhood is because they have to be let in to the person by another spirit, and it is the spirit of rejection. The rejection spirit is the most prevalent demon I see in my counseling practice, and it comes from um, abuse in childhood. Abuse, childhood pain, major disappointments, abandonment, divorce, things like that. Trauma in a child opens the door to the rejection demon. This Jezebel spirit is a man hater and a man controller. This spirit wants to be in control. And they're generally speaking, psychologically attracted to men in authority. They're not looking for the janitor or the custodian at the church. They're looking for the male at the church who, is, who has authority and who is in control partial control or complete control, the pastor, the associate pastor, board members, things like that. They like men in authority. And they have a tremendous ability to uh, appear holy and repentant and humble in public, but behind the scenes, they are the opposite. They live unholy lives. They will not repent because they've got this rebellion sensation through their, in their spirit, and they are not humble. They're controllers, manipulators. And how they manipulate is very interesting. They use their, usually use their sensuality to control men. They also use public humiliation and sex. They love to control men through threatened public humiliation and through their sensuality and their sexuality. But in their private lives, publicly they appear holy. Privately they are not. The Jezebel spirit is basically a witchcraft demon. They're very religious, they're very spiritual, and they're very much in rebellion. They want to control others, they want to be in authority, and they use deceit and chronic manipulation to do that. And in the book of Revelation, something very interesting was illustrated to us. Jesus ran into this powerful demon a woman named Jezebel in the New Testament church. It's in Revelation chapter 2. Do you remember that? Jesus said, I have a few things against you because you allow that woman Jezebel, which calls herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants, teaching them and seducing them. Now, you see, it's a female who's in authority, who likes control, and who is a seducer, a manipulator. That's the Greek word planeo, and it means, it's a Greek verb, it means to deceive someone. And it says, Jesus says, she she teaches and seduces them to commit fornication. That's the Greek word pornuo, it was a Greek verb, and it means to engage in some type of sexual immorality, and in this particular context, it was related to religion and idolatry. And Jesus said, this woman who is teaching, who's in control, who's seducing people, and are teaching them to commit fornication and teaching them to commit religious idolatry. Jesus said, I gave her space to repent. He gave her a chance to repent. What a great illustration of the Son of God. Even this type of a person infected with this type of a superpower demon, he still prefers mercy and still prefers grace to help in time of need. What an incredible Savior and what an amazing Lord you are serving today. If you get involved with someone who has a Jezebel spirit, uh, you are going to at some point in time have thoughts of, my God, I've got to get out of here. And some people will actually pack up and run from women who have these powerful demons. These Jezebel demons always have relationship problems. They always have deep-seated self, uh, self-centered self insecurity, poor self-concepts. And these spirits are extremely difficult to get out, uh, will not change and will not repent and will not place themselves emotionally in a position to get healed. They have to be crushed. And so when you turn somebody over to the Lord who has a Jezebel spirit, they won't repent and cannot be delivered from this powerful demon until they are broken. So what usually happens is some kind of terrible negativity comes into the person's life 
an accident, an illness, a death in the family, something that really shakes them to the core, and then they will repent. If you have a Jezebel spirit and you want to be delivered and you're ready to repent and you've been broken, 602-636-5800. God wants to heal you and deliver you and give you the full power of the Holy Spirit and a true, broken, loving, humble. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel that prophesy, and say thou unto them that prophesy out of their own hearts, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, Woe unto the foolish prophets that follow their own spirit and have seen nothing. O Israel, thy prophets are like the foxes in the deserts. Ye have not gone up into the gaps, neither made up the hedge for the house of Israel to stand in the battle in the day of the Lord. They have seen vanity and lying divination, saying, The Lord saith, and the Lord hath not sent them. And they have made others to hope that they would confirm the word. Have ye not seen a vain vision, and have ye not spoken a lying divination, whereas ye say, The Lord saith it, albeit I have not spoken? Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Because ye have spoken vanity, and seen lies, therefore behold, I am against you, saith the Lord God. And mine hand shall be upon the prophets that see vanity, and that divine lies, they shall not be in the assembly of my people, neither shall they be written in the writing of the house of Israel, neither shall they enter into the land of Israel, and ye shall know that I am the Lord God. Because even because they have seduced my people, saying, Peace, and there was no peace, and one built up a wall, and lo, others daubed it with untempered mortar. Say unto them which daub it with untempered mortar, that it shall fall. There shall be an overflowing shower, and ye, O great hailstones, shall fall, and a stormy wind shall rend it, lo, when the wall is fallen, shall it not be said unto you, Where is the daubing wherewith ye have daubed it? Therefore thus saith the Lord God, I will even rend it with a stormy wind in my fury, and there shall be an overflowing shower in mine anger, and great hailstones in my fury to consume it. So will I break down the wall that ye have daubed with untempered mortar, and bring it down to the ground, so that the foundation thereof shall be discovered, and it shall fall and ye shall be consumed in the midst thereof, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Thus will I accomplish my wrath upon the wall, and upon them that have daubed it with untempered mortar, and will say unto you, The wall is no more, neither they that daubed it. To wit, the prophets of Israel which prophesy concerning Jerusalem, and which see visions of peace for her, and there is no peace, saith the Lord God. Likewise, Thou son of man, set thy face against the daughters of thy people, which prophesy out of their own heart, and prophesy thou against them, and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Woe to the women that sew pillows to all armholes, and make kerchiefs upon the head of every stature to hunt souls. Will ye hunt the souls of my people? And will ye save the souls alive that come unto you? And will ye pollute me among my people for handfuls of barley and for pieces of bread, to slay the souls that should not die, and to save the souls alive that should not live, by your lying to my people that hear your lies? Wherefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against your pillows, wherewith ye there hunt the souls to make them fly. And I will tear them from your arms, and will let the souls go, even the souls that ye hunt to make them fly. Your kerchiefs also will I tear, and deliver my people out of your hand. And they shall be no more in your hand to be hunted, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Because with lies ye have made the heart of the righteous sad, whom I have not made sad, and strengthened the hands of the wicked, that he should not return from his wicked way, by promising him life. Therefore ye shall see no more vanity, nor divine divinations, for I will deliver my people out of your hand, and ye shall know that I am the Lord.